We are here. Now, listen up, people, because the stakes for this one are very interesting. Uh, Capwatch playing a bit ahead of schedule so we can get everything concluded. And this is the final series in Titans League for Capwatch. He has five wins, potential for three more here, obviously. But things could change massively for him because he's playing up against Ganji, who uh, has, a, has two more rounds after this, and Ganji's at two wins. And then you have Kingston and you have Miguel, who are also going to have to play Ganji, and they've got some rounds in hands. It's just like, basically, at the end of the day, you can only control yourself. And for Capoch especially, he's going to want victories here, T-West, as he runs forward. And then for Ganji, he started off uh, pretty strong. He uh, got a win against Jordan, and then he got a win up against Hera, which is pretty crazy because Hera's only lost one game, and I think Jordan's... Absolutely, yeah. Only lost They're both at the top of the standings for this group. Two, yeah. So, so Ganji got wins against the best players in the group. And so we'll see exactly what he's going to be able to bring to the table against Capwatch, who was 3-0'd by Jordan and also 3-0'd by Hera. But yeah, that's that's everything I have to say. Uh, we've got Gurjars versus Tatars, <laughs> though. This is a matchup we've seen before. Yep. And I've seen it go both ways. That The more I see Gurjars, the more I think that other camel saves have a chance to go camels against them in the castle age mm -hmm. and if you can get the numbers up even though the gajars have that bonus the numbers are still what matters mostly in those fights yeah and the tatars they have a pretty decent eco on this map just they can delay their farms for such a long time with the longer lasting goats and the extra couple of shorefish along with the berries that I think they can match the Gajaras. It, it's a very interesting matchup. I think it still favors the Gajaras, but I don't think. But I think there's still room for Tatars on this map more so than perhaps other maps like Arabia, yeah, especially with the big kill for them. Both of these sieves kind of have eco bonuses that that linger, um, and so the Tatars have the additional food on the sheep, which matter. It helps so much up to mid feudal. And then the Gurjaras have the the goats inside the mill bonus, which does last the whole game. However, it doesn't feel... I don't know how to describe it, but it just it feels uh, a, a bit weaker, I guess. Um, actually, I'm not yeah, even sure. Run. I'm not even sure that I, it does feel weaker. It actually feels very strong. But I, I guess where my brain is going is more so the transitions because due to the build order with the Gurjaras and how you play... There's a period after you open scouts where you don't usually... It doesn't feel natural to be able to switch into archers. And the Tatars have that window. So I don't know if, if that's making sense, but that's kind of where my brain goes on the matchup. Obviously, you're expecting some type of aggression here, though, uh, from the both of them. Uh, look at this lumber camp from Ganji, and look at where he placed it right between all those trees in that little nook. That's actually really good. <laughs> that's a really good lumber camp. Um, the, the thing I worry about, though, is that it takes these trees. They have 150 wood. It's going to be a long time before he can chop enough trees to fit Vils around it. Yeah, I think he's only going to want, like, two or three here for now. And hopefully for him... Well, actually, we're at 19 pop already. <laughs> well... Yeah, because he, he wants that second mill on the shorefish, too. It's not like he's going to have the wood for another lumber camp. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, you could probably fit five around there, but you are right. There's only one tile, and that one tile could lead to a lot of bumping. So maybe he's just got to chop. I mean, that tree is at 80 wood already, so he'll chop through that before we know it, and he'll be up. And Let's see if he can continue his uh, his theme. It was Jordan versus Ganji in the first week. He beat Jordan game one, and then Hera versus Ganji uh, second week, and he beat Hera game one, so... I wonder if he could be Capwatch game one. I don't know. Like it, it, he's pretty consistent from game to game. It is interesting though. Out of all the people that he's beaten, it's been game one against the two best players in the group. I feel like uh, Ganji is another player who is good on a wide variety of maps, and Capwatch is like that too. But I, I feel like you know sometimes players have a specialty. Like Draken's obviously an arena player. Yeah. And Hera, you know, he probably isn't. He's probably more of a standard map player and doesn't like the closed maps as much. But both these players, I feel like, are very versatile. Yeah. Ganji is... I think it's still fair to say he's been underrated for a while. Uh, but he's got... He had some big results before Titans League. He got a win against Jordan in the Red Bull qualifier, 
which shocked a lot of people. And that, I think that's where people started to be more aware of him. But I will say that this is an interesting start. He hasn't scouted scouted Capwatch at all. And the stable is just a little bit late. So with Capwatch's strategy here, man at arms, this could actually surprise Kanji. And I mean, his wood line, his berries, everything's still super exposed here. He hasn't walled up that side. Yeah, you see the scouting is very different. Kapach went forward early on, made a loop around the map to find where Ganji is. I think he knows that he wanted to get forward with the men at arms. Yeah. Ganji just was pushing his deer the entire time, and he sent his scout somewhere where he's not going to see the men at arms until they get close. I feel like it's pretty natural, though, to like maybe make a house towards the left side soon, so he might, might actually be looking over there. At something it might honestly even be something as simple as horse collar timing when he wants to add farms but yeah he's still looking for cap watch and this is a huge huge timing here because seeing that barracks right now is not uncommon for a scout build either so that barracks is not going to tell him that this is going to be man at arms and oh boy okay so he's sending villagers over there he'll see the scout does he react here oh my god what holy crap a great blocking here from Capwatch. Oh! Uh-oh. Panic. It was beautiful. And now it's kind of? Uh? Uh? Kind of? What a save from Ganji. Uh, That's will. insane. She'll make it back. Oh, Capwatch wants to dive. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, man. There, look at the idle time. Oh, <laughs> he saved so many bills. <laughs> and now he's going to lose two anyways. Disaster. Disaster. I, and you know, he has the scouts here to clean it up, but that's time the scouts are back at your own base and they're not forward. Mm hmm. Yeah, honestly, I'm still Kipach really is impressed. Pretty well walled already. I'm, I'm really impressed with how he dealt with that initially, but you've got three, two villagers stuck on the berries not working. You've got three villagers on your wood line that are stuck, and that's just tanked the worker efficiency down to 45, uh, 45% over the last minute. So, not really ideal to lose two villagers like that too yeah and you still have those palisades near your berries too kind of blocking those veils as he deletes them oh and he's that, that's a lot of wood on the palisades now too because they're three wood instead of two and he's housed as well pain 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 for ganji okay but let's see if we can counter attack we've got three spearmen or excuse me three archers two spearmen coming forward and this is that stage of the game where I mentioned, like, your jars, they're normally seeding farms because they've gone double mill. And so they don't really want to have to deal with the ranged units. So that's why they'll need walls. It seems like the walls are actually realistic for Ganji. And honestly, Ganji, if you're going to be walled here, man, just send your army forward here. Like, you do not want your army to have to deal with this right now. The walls can keep it out. And he thought about fighting T-West, but he backs away now. Yeah, it, it's really hard to engage those spearmen from that angle because they're the Tatars. They can have such a huge hill bonus if they get a poke on your scouts. Yeah. Okay. So possibly some game one jitters here for Ganji, but I think more than anything, it's just he he was greedy and he didn't scout properly and he paid the price for it. And Capwatch has done a great job to wall up behind this. Uh, he isn't fully walled on the left, though. That's something he'll have to plug. Uh, Ganji doesn't We're know that, obviously. Too. Yeah. This will be an awkward one, actually, because there is a hole to the far side of this wall where the house is going. And if he goes to plug it, the house could get hit. Um, uh, he's got it, though. Yeah, he's got it. Well done. And then he's got to shift back over because you don't want your palisades to go down. This is what I mean. Your At village least he is far a away. there. But yeah, that's the difficult part. Oh, there was a he hole a for poke. Ganji, and he had to drop a tower. I'm sorry for yelling. This is crazy on both sides. Oh, yeah, I see, I see it right next. And he had even walled there, too. He had a palisade right next to it. Yeah. Yikes. And look at the resources for Ganji. Like, he'd be in a good position to possibly go up to the next stage. But... He's... Yeah, he's close. And those archers have fletching, too. Yeah. He's just got all this pressure he's had to deal with. But, I mean, he still does have the stable units in here. Uh, Capwatch is going to try and wall them in, which is ambitious to say the least. So now that <laughs> villager is going to have to hide again. <laughs> He's going to be safe, though. He yeah. has a nice little forest to hide in. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. 
And okay, Spearman get brought over here from Catpotch. And so far, I think it's fair to say that Catpotch has been the better aggressor. And I think he's been better when it comes to damage control. Because we've had various instances of armies heading in towards the other. And Catpotch just hasn't taken any damage yet. Yeah, and it's very difficult to wall yourself with these woodlines, but Kapatra was paying attention. Even when the scouts got past that first layer, he still had a quick wall by mm -hmm. the other woodline that he yeah. was able to plug up. God, it's so annoying to have that hole, man. That that has ruined his timing and everything, but at least Ganji still got some passive food income from the goats in the tea, uh, in the mill, excuse me. It seems to me like he expects there's going to be more archers coming forward. He did see Catpotch is sending them forward, and Catpotch is just going to head right to that wood line. Do you think Ganji could have taken the goats and put them in the other mill earlier? Because right now those archers are kind of walled in next to that mill. I know mm -hmm. it has a lot of HP, but that's like the only thing he has left to attack. Um... I, it's just not something that crosses your mind <laughs> as a player. Like, there there was an instance uh, recently, I forget what series it was. I don't think it was in Titans League. But there was an instance where I saw a player abandon the front of their base. I think it was like an arena game, and they brought the goats with them. But it's just it's just an awkward thing to think about. And, and no player in ta Titans League Platinum, at least is going to be trying to focus down that mill, you know? They're just going to try and kill Vils, which is exactly what Catpotch is doing, and Catpotch is on the way up to Castle Age behind this. Just a clean game and a game that he needs, as someone in my chat just says, like, you hope Catpotch gets some wins here after being close to getting some important wins versus Hera. And then, again, reminder, Catpotch played earlier today as well against Jordan. This is his final series, his last chance to get victories. And here he's up by seven Vils. Both Ganji was idling the TC a bit more and lost two Vils. It's kind of insane how even after all of this pressure, Ganji's only lost two Vils. It is, yeah. I mean, right. his... Right, like you watch low elo legends and this would be like minus 20 at this point. Yeah, seriously, he's done a really good job. But look for a second, and it almost surprised me even though I was expecting it to be crazy. Look at the resources collected. Capoch has collected like 2,000 more resources in this game. So it just shows that what the efficiency has done for him. And that's, absolutely. That's and before that, he would it get It all sheep. starts with those sheep that you have that yeah. you have with Tatars, right? He hasn't even gotten them yet. And they they help you in the Dark Age, and then they help you later on too. That's actually kind of funny. You, know, what? you could justify trying to steal the sheep from that mill against Grajaras because you're Tatars. <laughs> What I always wanted to do is, like, have a team game where the Tatars just make TCs and sling sheep to the Gajars. Oh. And put them in mills. Castle Age start. Just drop TCs, yeah. <laughs> or you you know what we should do is we should do, uh like, the 10 times Civ bonus. And we, uh the, the shared Civ bonus thing. And we should do Britons for oh, cheap yeah. TCs. Tatars for the sheep. And the HP. Gurjara's for the garrison. <laughs> uh, and I'm trying to think what other stack we could do. It could, sounds pretty Maybe crazy. like, uh, oh, go for like the Portuguese so you can keep slinging stone to the Tatars to add more TCs. <laughs> Portuguese absolutely <laughs> break that game mode too because uh, the 20% off on gold cost for uh, units multiplied by 10, it's just everything doesn't cost gold. Yeah. It's wild. Actually, I saw it for that game mode. I saw one stack that was like you get the Bengalis for their unique tech, so Vils don't take pop space. Yeah. And then you do Hindustanis, so Vils are free, and Persians, so they're created instantly. Yeah. There's wacky things you can do. Ganji needs Ganji needs something like that to get himself out of this hole. He needs Vils to create instantly. He needs something more. I mean. Yeah, he, he needs Trevomps Riders to have a shield that doesn't run out against these crossbows. Yep. Or his own siege, possibly. I mean, he's doing the right thing to try and bring it back. He's going full Trevomps. He's up against crossbowmen, so that would... It makes a lot of sense here, but... Capoch, just no hesitation, coming forward, bringing the siege. We'll have knights. I, I would personally prefer to see a camel or two. Uh, as they just do more, a little bit more bonus damage, but I think the same thing applies. You just have a meat shield in front of your crossbowman that allows you to chew up the shield of the Shravamshas before they hit you. Yeah, exactly. 
and I think and the knights could actually kind of work like that because they have a bit more HP than the camels do. Oh, we might I see think. the goats actually taken here. Let's go, oh, Catwatch. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> he's still not gonna do it. Dang it. <laughs> oh, he's not. He's not going for it. He has to be careful not to lose these knights to conversions, though. Ganji's got a lot of Shravamsha riders. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they, these things are so cheap to make too. Yeah. They just come out of nowhere. Oh, and the and monks Kibach behind. Might lose all of these crossbows. Seriously. Actually, that converted knight is gonna help block that choke point so the crossbows can't escape. Oh, and the one Shravamsha got behind there as well, and Ganji's gonna get the clear and. You know, how many times have we seen Capwatch in Season 2 of Titans League just get a good position and then start to watch it slip away from him here? I mean, maybe a little bit of fear in his mind that he could start to throw this game. The forward siege is not going to work anymore. The forward siege only works if you have an army to back it up. And you know, I think it's just such a huge risk to go such a heavy crossbow army yeah, I agree against with you. the Gajars without a second unit. Yeah. Uh, I'm in full agreement. I, I think, you know, the knights or the camels in front needed to be the key there. And Capoch just, <laughs> with his tail between his legs, just runs home now. <laughs> and he's like, uh, okay, I guess we'll brace ourselves. Drops the second TC. And that's a good position for it uh, near the stone and the gold. But the pressure's going to be coming. And if Ganji knew that Capoch wasn't in the middle of the map, he should absolutely go further forward with the siege. He shouldn't make it there. He should, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't see army? No, no, no. Keep going. Keep going. Don't make it there. <laughs> Keep going, yeah. Keep going, dude. Drop it over there where the relic is. Because you've got the yeah, time. it's still really far. Yeah, but that... here's the thing. Kapach is still on two ranges, and he still has 11 crossbows. He really doesn't have the knight numbers to fight this yet. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting how he continues to make the crossbow. Like, I figure at the very least, and it could just be because of the cost, but wouldn't it make a little bit more sense to maybe even try cav archers? Uh, where they have more mobility to run away. But then again, you know, with Cav Archers, it's almost like you've got to have a lot of numbers, and that's very hard to achieve sometimes when you're trying to boom as well. Exactly. And it feels like the two units that the Gujaras want to go for it, both the Shravam Shriders and the Camels, both can act as a counter to Cav Archers in those different situations. Well, for Capwatch, it's going to be Eco that wins him this game. Eco and numbers. He's getting bloodlines for his knights. He's, He's still going to make those. Bills still. Yeah, and he's making a second stable too. I, I have to say though, like the Siege Workshop placement from Ganji, it's extremely obvious for us, but it, I just feel like it's going to be too awkward for him to continually reinforce with the Siege because it just takes so long to get forward here. Yeah, these Shravamsha Riders, they're going to yeah. be able to get through as well. And if they can they're get crazy. through, there's a hole! And he's oh, going to try and hold it open. And he's through now, Turn and oh, this is going to be so annoying. The, the whole eco difference could disappear. Monks go for the conversions on the knights. The crossbows go to get the monks. Good micro from Capwatch here. But the Shravamsha riders are also hitting a lot of the crossbows as villagers are dying in Capwatch's base. And Ganji with the comeback only potential. Only one of the monks went down. This is crazy. Yeah, the, most of the crossbows are gone now as well. And there's still villagers getting picked off in Capwatch's eco at the moment. Yeah. And the problem with the Shravam Shriders is with their shield, TCs don't kill them. You need to get your knights in there or some type of melee unit to clear them up. What is happening, Ganji? Man, if he could just send those three Shivamshas on the farms to the north, he might win this game right now. It, it, there's so many villagers yeah, there's there. there's so many mills there. Holy crap. I mean, this this went from 0 to 100 really fast. Ganji found a position and he took it. It took full advantage of it as well, but can he continue to do that? He's still on one TC eco. He's killed 23 villagers from Capwatch in this game. Unbelievable. And and with everything Capwatch had done earlier, it's only two kills. Those crossbows that got in didn't even kill a villager. Yep. On the left side, you had a sheep actually go down underneath the TC for Capwatch. He's got lots of idle time. And the... Pressure should continue here from Ganji. And something I really want to credit Ganji for, obviously running in was great, but his monk control has been awesome. When the knights showed up to his base earlier, he had all three of his monks on three different knights. And then right there as well, he got some really helpful conversions. Dang, 71 population versus 70. That other PC. And, the monks and that's going to be, be so there. painful when you're the Tatars and your TCs are shooting your bonus sheep. 
that and you don't when you're fighting up the hill right you want to have the hill you want to have the exactly. control you want that hill position that, that's the point of the tap stars on this map mostly it's that hill bonus you want to use so my question is does ganji ever get to a second tc like this is still pretty all in and how far does this push go like does this turn into a couple siege elephants does it just continue with the monk manganel I'm looking back at his base. His eco looks pretty good, honestly. He's got lots of food eco. His wood eco is kind of rough, so I think maybe this is going to be a continuous all-in. And Capwatch is going to try and drop a castle to us. I'm not sure where exactly you could drop it, but either way, if it's spotted, it could always be denied here. Yeah, Genji does have that forward manganel. And if you're going to place it somewhere, you got to place it somewhere that you can wall the bills in so the Shravam Shriders don't mm -hmm. jump them. Yeah, you also, you, you kind of want it on the right side, I think, to get your Golden Stone locked down. But, oh, that position. Oh, my goodness. This this Maybe has to be where the game's decided. Attention. Right? This has to be where the game's yeah, decided. Yeah, does he have the army here? He's got five monks forward. Ganji, you can deny that, bro. He almost doesn't believe that he can deny it, but I think he can. He has to get his monks ready to convert camels, and then the manganel goes for the crossbows, and some of the shravamshas go for the villagers. Oh my word, this is wild. So tough to micro for both players. The monk control from Ganji's good. He can't get too close to the town center. TC's focusing down the monks. A couple monks go down. A couple conversions happen. Lots of villagers going down for Catwatch. Are you kidding me? Catpotch is falling apart again here in Titans League 2 West. He keeps getting the positions to get victories, but he can't finish it off. And look to the left he side. He can't transition there. There's more Vils dying there. He doesn't know. Everything is just being hit by the Shravamp Riders. They're just so fast. 40 it's like, even villagers Even if you react killed. to them and you garrison a 40, 42 Vils. <laughs> oh. Oh. This, this is painful for Catpotch. Oh, you can tell he probably doesn't want to call the GG because of how good of a position he was earlier. But that castle not going up. And and honestly, if your push st is stalled now, if you're Ganji, you've done enough to be able to boom back into the game. 58 villagers killed and counting, obviously. His castle still can't go up easily. You still got units here that could pick off your villagers. And I guess the house is well, well done. Balls. Yeah, that may will maybe help him. Oh no. Oh, what is happening? Ganji's going to win another game yeah, it, to start off a series here. And like, you can see why Kapach wanted that castle there. If it goes up, it protects all the farms on the left. It protects the gold and the stone and the TC on the right. Yep. That was just the perfect spot where Ganji could deny it. What a ridiculous comeback. I mean, Monastery's always sending monks forward. Siege. And Travamsh is also streaming in as well. He's gotten so many crucial conversions here. Is he converting the mill right now? I think he was converting the mill. Anyways, he wins the game. I thought Ganji I think was, he was done charging here. A conversion there. Yeah. Holy crap! I can't believe that. Sixty-nine villagers killed after the two initially were lost. For Ganji, it looked like this was over. But I think you'd mentioned it. Like, it must have been a unit composition thing here for Capwatch. I think committing so heavily to crossbows against Ravamsha Riders was questionable. You probably have to have some camels and some a bit more of a meat shield in the front there. Yeah, it's just that one fight in the wood line that cleaned the crossbows put him so far behind. I wow. feel like against the Gajars, you always need a combination. And that if you go hard into knights, you get killed by camels. If you yeah. go hard into crossbows, you get killed by Shravam Shriders. You, and it's so easy for them to switch between the two units, too. You just you need something that can always deal with both of them. Yeah. Also, uh, 14 conversions there from Ganji. That does not include the uh <laughs> that does not include the healing that the monks offered. And wild stuff as someone saying what can capwatch do as a composition crossbow camel is really good uh we had capwatch play earlier today against jordan it was a live series that we covered earlier today capwatch actually had the grajaras and then jordan beat him with a scout opening into camels and crossbows and, and potentially some cab archers here as well so again just to restate this whole thing this is going to be wild here in group c now 
So this is Catwatch's final series, a final one he'll play. He's still stuck at five wins. Ganji's going to have sets remaining after he concludes the series with Catwatch, and he's now at three wins. So an amazing position for Ganji to be in. Catwatch desperate to win on his home map now, T-West, which is going to be, uh, I think, Scandinavia. And here we are, game number two. But there is a, a worrying theme if you're a Catwatch fan. And the worrying theme, and this is honestly one of the most frustrating things as a player, and honestly, I can relate to it so hard, is doing everything right strategically, getting into the position to win the game, and then not being able to close it out. That happened like in two instances versus Hera. That happens, you know, another instance, I think, in a previous series. And then game number one was another example of it. So it's painful for him. Yeah, it's just, it just hurts so much because the strategy was good. The execution early was there, but then he just he threw it all away. So credit to Ganji for the comeback. That didn't work out. And what do you think about Lithuanians and well, here? Watch. So I haven't seen them on Scandinavia too much because I've mostly seen them used for cross. So I think true. I think this is actually the first time I've seen them played on this map so far. I've seen Byzantines a lot, also because Kapach likes to pick them. Mm -hmm. But because you get off to that great start, you put your villagers on wood, you don't need to collect food at the start because you start with an extra 150, and you get your fishing ships out incredibly fast. Yeah. You'll have a much better early game than the Byzantines. I think the worry is just, can you secure the, the relics and then late game? Oh no, Kapach, don't run into the TC. Yeah, I think Catwatch okay, is possibly <laughs> coming over here to try and deny a dock. dock. But, you know, it's also good to know because you don't know exactly where your opponent's TC is going to be located on this map. Uh, there can be a wide exactly. variety of generations, and sometimes you're not always on the opposite shoreline. So I think Catwatch, as long as he gets a, hit, a hill hit or two, and Ganji stops chasing him, which Ganji's not doing... <laughs> Uh, okay, this is fun. Great job, guys. He's trying to use that hill. Yeah. But I think, though, if you're the, the Byzantines, end, it's, it's good if you take that fight because the Lithuanians usually are the save that clicks up to the feudal age faster. Mm -hmm. so if you can get your HP down before they get to feudal, they might be less inclined to try to snipe some villagers if you're going to, if you're adding docks later on or if you want to sneak a vill. Yeah. You know, I could see Ganji going fast castle here. It just crossed my mind. Like, remember, um, well, I don't know what you've covered, but did you happen to see Yo versus Dark last week? I re what remind me what happened there. I think I did see it. It's okay. So Yo was Lithuanians and Dark was Japanese. It was their third game, and it was cross. And oh, Yo yeah, the went one on cross. Yes, he yes. went fast he castle. Went naked fast castle. Yeah, and he went fast castle in the night. Yeah. But keep in mind, on cross, you don't have three boars, and you don't have all the deer. And you obviously still have fish, so I feel like there's even more of a reason to try and go fast castle here. And and also, if you weren't going fast castle, why would you be pushing in all your deer? You, you like, have all the fish boom. You're going to have three You'd boars. So I think Ganji tries to go fast castle here, honestly. Otherwise, I think I disagree with him pushing the deer. He wouldn't need the food. Yeah, and you know, I feel like there's a precedent for that on Scandinavia. I I can remember years ago, I feel like Mayans and Mongols were the two meta civs, and yeah. Mayans could often get away with a fast castle on this map. Mm -hmm. So it could be something he's thinking about, even though we don't really see it that often. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... When you go into this series, you know Capwatch likes his hybrid maps and he likes to kill the fish. But if you just get enough of a fish boom to go FC and then you just go Night Monk and go crazy pressure, you know, maybe it could work. But, you know, I, we say all this and the potential's there and he's pushing all of his deer, but he's getting Loom now. So what do we even know? Uh, he's going to probably just go up to Feudal Age. Yeah, and the thing to keep an eye on is, do they send Vils forward and try to sneak dock, or do they just have their own fish? Ganji, do you not see the... Oh, this is so good for, for Catwatch now. Oh, man, Ganji. He actually saw the scout there, and he saw that the deer he saw the scout was being pushed the deer. in, and he, just, he must not have been paying attention there as he placed his lumber camp. Yeah, that, that's the hard thing, because you're clicking up, 
And just as you're clicking up, you're trying to move all of your bills off of your food and onto your wood. And he wasn't paying attention to the scout while he was doing that. Okay, but but he, hear me out. So look underneath Ganji's TC. He's got 290 food rotting because he's this is a water build. So he's got 290 food rotting there, not taking it. 100 next to it, and then 13 next to that. If he wants to go water or archers or whatever, the key thing here is scouting. So I don't think he ever needed to even push the deer <laughs> in the first place, and then he would have been able to know where his opponent is and what his opponent is up to. Yeah, and you know, the hard thing is, you know, the sheep you can take whenever you want, right? You can just kind of leave them there. Mm -hmm. And if you want to take them later, you can take them there. Uh, the boar is like, he has 200 food on that boar. He didn't even need to kill that boar to click up. Yeah. He, he still has the other boar left. And the yep. longer the game goes on, the harder it is to take those boar because you've moved your vills out of your TC. They're on the lumber camps. They're on the gold. You don't have villagers to shoot the boar with. <laughs> and then you're not really paying attention to bring it in. You're going to have other places on the map to micro. It's not like you can look at your Loringville and bring it back and shoot it with the TC as cleanly as you can in the Dark Age. Dude, this is really interesting. So look at what Ganji's doing. He's gone two docks at home and he's adding fishing ships. And he, he, remember, he's blind now. He doesn't have a scout, which ruins his strat. But he's looking to see if Catwatch is going to dock him. And, you know, Catwatch is able to actually get his scout in here. Uh, Catwatch's scout might actually be walled in here. But this is precisely what Jordan had done against Catwatch earlier in the day. It's just, I know what you're going to do, Catwatch. You're going to use Byzantines and try and pressure me. So I'm going to just sit at home with two docks so I can compete versus your one. It's a really interesting strat. So if you're Kapach now and you have that scout inside of Ganji's base, where do you think you want to be scouting? Because there, there are so many things Ganji could be doing. You, yeah. He could be making an archery range, maybe trying to go land, or he could be adding more docks in the back. What do you think you want to prioritize your scouting along the coast, maybe? Or because right now he's been moving his scout around that forward area in front of the gold. Well, honestly, I think you you try and break out, <laughs> like, and if you like, you attack the wall and then try and pay attention to it to see if he will come attack you. But not having vision there is precisely why Ganji's sending the bill. He deleted a hole in the wall and has escaped. Scout. And oh, he also traps in the scout. And he's going to kill the scout there. Ganji with the plays here against Catwatch game two. Dang. Okay. And the scout didn't see the fish and it didn't see the dock. It was like one tile away from them. Oh. So he doesn't actually know what Ganji's doing down here. He just saw Vil's wall and he might not expect that second dock now. Dang. I mean, I will say this though. It is still Byzantines with two docks on you, right? Like you've invited a lot of pressure here if you're Ganji. So that's not great. And we'll see if he conclude, uh, completes excuse me, his dock on the other side as Catwatch is actually sending a villager there <laughs> and has a fire ship. The same spot. Okay, so Ganji could wall this. You can use Palisade walls to block fire, as I'm sure yes. you have made. I think you made a video on that, so <laughs> people could watch more about yeah, that on T West channel. Yeah, okay. fires can't shoot over enemy units. That includes walls. Sometimes it does get through. It's, it's not really consistent, but usually you can block it, and you just have to be careful to keep repairing it and building the wall. Yeah, and, and this is where it gets annoying, right? Because you are trying to make your dock, and this gives Capoch time to make fires. Like, Capoch will be completely fine. He's still got Byzantine fires, which fire faster, and he knows... And then on the other side, we have a nice demo there from Capwatch. Though both players seemingly are going to defend their fish, and this is likely going to go to Castle Age. And Ganji's villager even making a run for it right now, actually, on the shoreline. And you see the players just both almost clicking up. It feels like Capwatch is a bit closer on the resources. Ganji doesn't quite have the gold. That was really nice micro there from Capwatch with the repairing. Ganji not quite as... Efficient there in the demo. Watch the demo at uh, on Ganji's side. That's a massive demo there from Catwatch. He needed that one. Though, unfortunately, it, he's still going to lose the villager, which means no repairing there. The vill could wall herself in still, I think. Uh, oh, no. She did. Yeah, she, she did. She fell into the net. Sad life. Okay, so stable for Catwatch. Um... We don't have a stable for Ganji, who I could totally see going crazy monks after how he played the first game. 
But you've got to prioritize Navy still if you're both players and getting the War Galley upgrade. Not doing so would be a mistake. And I also think not repairing your fires if you're Ganji would be a mistake, which he's going to now do. Um, as he also brings in his boar. This is not the normal time for the boar, but you absolutely should take it because right. you're going to need the food. Yeah, and he just kind of built... What did he build that mill on? He just plopped it down so he could make the market, right? It's not like yeah. he built it on the... Ibexes are anywhere useful. Yeah, I mean, there's no berries, right? So you can't do that, and he's yeah, going to so make like a you, barracks you... in the middle of the map now. Yeah, so like you were saying earlier, you flip that build around. You take the boars early instead of taking the Ibexes. Yep. You get more scouting, yep. and then the mill becomes useful later on. Yeah, and I think that's that's something that Ganji will, will learn from this because having the scouting would help him now to know what Catwatch is opening with. But I think he was going to go for Heavy Spearman play anyways. A demo from Ganji on the left. He just traded a demo with Capoch, or I guess like north-ish, north-left. <laughs> Northwest, there's a term for that. Um, and yeah, now War Galley is going to come in for Ganji, who's still just patrolling in defense on his side to keep his fish alive. And he's making the siege workshop right in front of Capoch's yes, face. forward. And Kapach will see this. He has his stables there. <laughs> and he's going for camels right away. Double monastery. This is this is going to be crazy clown game. Let's go. Is, and all, that's what I said. Ganji, he's he's a Black Forest player. He knows sometimes you got to go for those clown plays. Yeah. And he's prepared to do a monk push. Doesn't have a lot on gold, which hurts this. He's got tons on wood, but only five on gold. I think he's worried that the knights are going to break into his base, but... He's, he's going to struggle to produce Siege and Monks at the same time as the Navy and Capwatch. Not getting the War Galley upgrade, which is fascinating. It does eject his ships to fight, and he might regret that now because the demos are going to land nicely for Ganji. Ganji will protect his water. Yeah, and it feels like Capwatch might not have wanted to keep investing there because he himself didn't have any fish. There's nothing he's really protecting. Yeah. And it's going to take a lot of eco to defend this push on land. So yep. he's just going to use the ships as well as he can, clear up what he can, clear the dock on the western shore, and doesn't want to have to keep investing into the navy. He's concentrated on his base now. I'm going to tell you what the answer is with my limited clown knowledge, okay? And I don't know if Catwatch is going to want to do it. It's double monastery of your own, and you go for atonement here. I think that's what you have to try. But let's see, you might use his monks to try and convert the spears or something. But at the moment, it just seems like he wants to continue to go for more knights and more camels. And I guess he does have the numbers, but he will donate conversions to Ganji, which is a dangerous game. The very dangerous yeah, game to will. play. And the hard thing is, the Lithuanians, their monasteries work faster too. Yep. So even if you want to go for your own monks, you're going to be behind in production. I mean, if he can engage... Ibex is running around in that fight. <laughs> Dude, this is a very confusing <laughs> fight right now. I mean, if he can delay this and then, you know, maybe stabilize, okay. But I don't like just running in towards monks and spearmen like this. And it's a slippery slope yeah, he's here. He's lose the knights. It's just not yeah, a cap watch thing. Now on the way for Ganji. To, to go atonement, to go for crazy monks, it's just so far out of Capwatch's style. He prefers the eco, the fish, and the knights. And look at that. The, the siege is going to go down there. And more monks are going to be on the way. And more spearmen are there. And that's Capwatch's gold. What is happening? Ganji. Ganji converts another knight. Ganji's on the gold. Is Ganji going to win this game as well? Holy this, cow. This feels like a really good push. The ram... I like the decision to open with the ram instead of a manganel. You really put the pressure on those buildings. Yep. And now Redemption's in, and Ganji is a player who knows how to use buildings to charge up conversions, and he converts the scorpion. Just yep. switches targets and converts it. Yeah, and he's got more monks, so just convert the camel. And he's like, thanks for that too. I appreciate it, buddy. This is awesome. I, I, and I'm going to kill your monk with the knight that you gave me, and I see another camel, and I'm going to convert that too. And this is the amazing and annoying, if you're Catwatch, snowball that can happen with this type of play. He does finally add a scout now, so he will be able to get a couple kills on monks, which is nice. And it could always turn back around here with 
you know, Ganji looking away, and he's obviously made this look easy so far, so. Oh, yeah, and he he just deleted uh, Manganel out of nowhere because he didn't want it to be converted. Oh, man, this is rough. This is so crazy. And the buildings are going to have to be deleted. You don't want to donate a barracks. You don't want to donate houses. Yeah. Like, what do you do against this? Yeah, no, it, it's always a hard decision because sometimes, sometimes you also want to let them get the conversion if you want to attack because you're gonna use up your monk juice. Yeah, just Kapach needs to find some type of army now. Hey. The monks are walking in his base, and he just has a couple of camels. Yeah, and now, now it's the correct play to go for the Mangonel. Like if you're gonna go for the TC, you want Mangonel. And I think also this is where you need a deep breath moment if you're Ganji. Make sure you're walled. Add a second TC, possibly. But then again, like, adding the second TC can distract you. So maybe that's even wrong. I think you just continue the push. Obviously, if you could manage the three TC boom and also this, then do it. But I don't think there's anyone that can manage this level of a monk siege push and a three TC boom. Dude, like... Well, his TC is under pressure. At least it does have a bit more HP than normal. He has to throw up a market in the back to rebalance his eco. And I just don't see how he stops this now. He's trying yeah. to go for light cav. <laughs> Look at all the red dots on the on the camels. <laughs> oh man, it only gets and worse. Don't kill him. No, Capoch, don't do it. Don't do it. No, not again. <laughs> well, he, he has scouts, scouts but not enough. And everything is getting converted. Yikes, man. I, I almost can't believe what we're witnessing here today. The, the final series for Capwatch. After the first few rounds, everything was looking so freaking good for him. And things have just been... And things could not now. have gone worse, honestly, for him. And you know, Ganji had a rough start to this game losing his scout. But he knew exactly what to do in early Castle Age against Capwatch's favorite civilization, the Byzantines. And it's just been a full clown fest here. My goodness. Oh, and there's I don't and there's very, the fires now on the fishing ships as well. All those oh, fires on man. the fish. Yeah, so he, he's very clearly familiar with what Kapach wanted to do. This was his home map, and this was the sieve he wanted. Yeah. And Ganji came up with a plan to counter it. Yeah, it's the second straight series that someone just decided to to dock at home and wait for Kapach to arrive, whereas in other sets Kapach was always the aggressor there, and they weren't really expecting it at the time. Or at least they didn't know what to to do when they expected it. Yeah, I feel like forward docks, most of the time they pay off. Because even if you're trading equally, you're still killing fish. Yeah. But if someone is prepared for it with a double dock and has fires being produced, then it's easier for them to react to it. Yeah, Ganji got, gets a little rough here. He's getting the pikeman upgrade now, which will obviously help. But I mean, he's got 64 villagers. There is actually a knight in his base right now, so uh, it's going to have to send some monks home, and he's had a lot of idle time too, to be fair, but it's 28 villagers versus 63, and there should be no way for Catwatch to actually stop the main push in the middle, and the guy could barely even take any gold at the moment, so I know you're Byzantines, but he's if you don't have another gold... GC. Oh man, the stables are being converted again. I also would be a little tilted losing this way. And being tilted does not help your chances of winning the third game either. Which will be on yeah, Ganji's own. Map. play like this can be tilting. Yeah. That, that's for sure. Yeah, and I mean, he's, he's within his rights to continue to try. He doesn't know the exact build difference. Uh, normally, these monk siege pushes are very low eco. So I think there's some concern, or and not some concern, but I mean, he's thinking there might be a hope. chance. Yeah, there's hope. He's he's hoping that Ganji doesn't have any eco upgrades, which he doesn't, and that he's still on one TC, which he is, oh, but oh, <laughs> GG, much. nice joke. <laughs> oh, Catpunch. Well, you, you gotta love Catpunch. He's very obvious As about how he, he said, feels. He might be tilted from this. Oh, GG, nice joke. Well... Ganji's not looking like a joke here in Titans League, guys, because he's now, again, this is his third series. Only one conversions. Has, 
four and... wins, and he's got two more sets after this. We, we haven't even seen game three yet, so dang, dude. Sorry, you were saying about the conversions? I interrupted. <laughs> oh, yeah, I said he has 21 conversions this game. That's a lot. And you, you can just tell on the graph when that when that happened. Yeah. And you know, it must be extra tilting to be the Byzantines and have this happen because they can do the exact same thing too. They have exactly. the cheaper pikemen. They have the great monk rush. And it's just it's just the timing and the scouting of it. And that was perfectly played by Ganji. Up until this point, Kapoch has been able to have his way with people because he takes the fight to them on water. And then it's one dock versus one dock when he's Byzantines. And Byzantines win in the one dock situation because of the more efficient fires. That hasn't happened here. That has not happened today at all. And so that must be a frustrating feeling. Then I think he was just straight up out of his comfort zone. Opening two stables initially felt like it made sense. But remember when I said it, like before that gets out of hand, I think a lot of the arena style players or players who've experienced this type of push know you kind of have to just embrace the monk war there and go for a second monastery and try and get atonement. And the only thing you do out of your stables there is make light calf. You never, never, like never make knights scouts, yeah. and camels. And he just continued to make knights and camels, hoping it would work. So he's probably frustrated with the you... strat, but like he didn't do himself any favors there either. Yeah, it was like against the Lithuanians too. You're usually expecting the knights from them, and that's why he started opening those camels. But yeah. out, of, out of everything you could make at the stable, at least you know knights can fight the spearmen off. Camel is the worst unit you could have gone with there, and that's what he opened with. Here we are, game three. Capoch desperate for wins. I think it'll actually be good for him, and I say this having been there, to have a more relaxed Dark Age and Feudal Age, like just to, you know, unwind a little bit. Uh, during the Red Bull cast, you know, jokes were made about his gamer face. You know, he's rrr, rrr, so aggressive and like staring at the <laughs> computer and he's ready to deliver. But, you know, the gamer face is more relaxed right now as he tries to, you know, untilt himself a little bit here. Uh, Hindustanis are, is a great civilization. We've seen it on open maps a lot here, T-West. Uh, how do you feel about them on a map like Fortify Clearing, where it normally goes a bit later? Interesting matchup against Burgundians because they do have Imperial Camels if it goes late that can deal well against the Cavalier or even early Paladin that sometimes Burgundians want to go for on this map. Mm -hmm. And probably also trade decently against the Crustier. If there is any melee unit that trades okay against them, it's probably the Imperial Camel. Yeah, It's expensive to get to them, but also the stuff it counters is kind of expensive too. Yeah, I think the I think the Hindustanis can definitely compete. If we're talking about peak options, Imperial Camel and Cav Archer or Imperial Camel and Hand Cannons with nine range is super strong against uh like Paladin or Coustier and Halb. But I think the difference there and what I just mentioned is that one of them is a double gold comp, and one of them is a food wood and then gold comp. And so it is actually much easier on your economy to have access to help and you know both civs have decent skirmishers as well if the time comes so i think you know maybe if i'm ganji obviously you you're probably playing towards the light calf meta here that's very good for your civ but i think maybe in the end what you want is you want to like open halberdier force those camels back force them into hand cannons and then you make a big switch into stable units that's kind of what i'm thinking right now yeah, it's it's interesting that both these civs, at least they have bombard cannons. So they have like the crucial unit that you want for late game on mm -hmm. this map. This build is we'll, also very we'll clean. We'll see because Hindustanis, Gandhi. both these civs, yeah, both these civs have really good ecos too. With yeah. the Burgundians with their uh, eco upgrades early, and then the Hindustanis just have, having the cheaper vills. All right, so uh, I'm really not sure what to think about this. I feel like generally Burgundians are the better civ for the cloud maps, but Hindustanis have like they have tools to use against them. Yeah, I think Burgundians are easier to play if you have the build down, because it's just so cheap to get those eco upgrades, and having it in age earlier is precious. So, uh, Ganji seems to have the build down. I uh, I actually played Fortify Clearing with Ganji uh, like a month ago, so we did practice games, and um. We kind of had discussions on this build, and it, for me, 
it took a lot of getting used to to get the wood upgrade at 11 pop and time that with the second house and and not have any idle tc time and have it all be smooth so um yeah i it, seemingly he's practiced that right and he knows exactly what he's up to here but walling yeah, for when now I, when i've played burgundians on these maps i've seen the key is getting a very clean deer push early so you just have that extra food to afford the wood upgrade and mm -hmm. it looks like he's managed to do that <laughs> i mean maybe this is too early <laughs> but with what Capoch said when he called the gg after the previous game <laughs> You what? think he wants to go for a clown rush again? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm thinking, like, what would Capoch say if he got phlegm revved? <laughs> like, <laughs> if uh, Flemish Revolution plays its role in a victory here for Ganji, I cannot imagine Capoch is going to be too pleased about it, because I know no one at the high level thinks that should belong in the game. Um, there's That's, like, the yep, one no thing one that... That's it's... the one thing that literally everyone who plays this game at a high level uh, would agree with. And we disagree on a lot of stuff sometimes, so. Yeah, no, no one likes that. Well, we've it's... we've talked, yeah, we both... It feels like it's not a very AoE 2 thing. I, I agree, yeah. And I, you know, listen, you could talk about how it doesn't, it it's, it shouldn't be attached to a sieve that has all the bonuses the Burgundians do, but we've had that conversation before. I try not to get started on certain topics. <laughs> Um, someone said, T90, what do you think about what the devs did to Incas to me earlier? And I was like, don't get me started, you know? <laughs> don't get me started, but... Uh, you see, that's something I think we disagree about, is I think you liked it, and I absolutely hated it. All right, we're talking about it. No, 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 I don't have... <laughs> All right, let's put it on record. I don't necessarily have an issue with the devs deciding to remove the Feudal Age Blacksmith upgrades from Inca Villagers, because the build order, while I would maintain it was creative... And it was way more like creative and build order oriented than, let's say, the polls bonus. Um, it was obnoxious. All I'm saying is, if you yeah. remove a bonus from a civilization, how about you replace it with something half decent? Uh, Inca's currently sitting there with the worst team bonus I've ever heard of that doesn't seem like it fits for the Incas at all. Bothers me. It's better than their old team bonus. Let's, let's give them that. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't suit their identity whatsoever. And it, weren't Incas, yeah, like, really. known for their agriculture? I'm pretty sure they had some level of, yeah, like, you know, farming. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it, because I wouldn't want to be in a situation like we have the Burgundians, where they don't make any other changes, and it, the thing is still in the game. Ah, yeah, I see. So it's like we're halfway yeah, there. Because, yeah, I feel like it was just... It was... <laughs> My experience of, of it was I played in the Improvement Cup with ACCM and we played a 2v2 against Vinchester. Mm -hmm. And I, I I had a very good game against Vinchester by going for a Vil Rush. And I was like, you know what? If I can beat Vinchester with this strategy, it probably shouldn't be in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of... of t we'll, we'll, we'll move on here. Speaking of tilting people and beating people maybe you shouldn't have, when Capoch returned to the game... I, you, people think he was salty with what he just said at the end of the previous game. I had that build order down pat. That was back when I was making like the Nobaru videos and everything. And oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, he would also always pick Chinese. Like he, for the first like six months, he only played Chinese. He didn't do random Civ. I heard some words from Capot. <laughs> Let's just say that. And oh no, <laughs> what's happening here at the villager? Oh, the villager dies! Capoch's scout was trapped in, and Ganji, a little sloppy there, lost his scout. I think he thought he was going to kill it. Well played, Capoch, to be able to uh, yeah, you know, think, kill the vill. Yeah, I think Ganji didn't realize there was a hill there until the very end and tried to run the vill back, yep. but just wasn't in time. Yeah, now it is bad for Capoch that his scout is trapped because you want that out in the field. But, I mean, he's going to be able to make more... And he's going to have a cleaner uptime than Ganji is at the moment. So Ganji losing that villager obviously does hurt the eco. Uh, you would prefer the Burgundians in most cases because of their cheaper eco upgrades. But just wasn't able to ease his way to the next age here. Trying to drop off resources. And finally, there he goes. But now Capoch yeah, and I and laughed about that about... later. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the interesting thing about this map is there's nine relics in total. Not only do you have like a slightly hilly version of Arena in the middle, 
you also have these relics on the outside mm -hmm. that you need to contend for too. So going very heavy to the middle and getting the relics can be good if you're also sneaking around to the outside, then all of a sudden you might have six or seven relics. Okay, so both scouts are one hit away from going down. Ganji was considering, because he has more HP, going to hit that. However, he's waited for the new scout, which is the correct move. You don't want to take the risk. And I know this wall is going to go down pretty quickly because of the Hindustani stable unit bonus, but uh, that scout is going to end out? up dying. Oh, that, that was really close. I think that was six hits away. And people say relic placement is a bit unfair. I think it's fine. You got nine relics to work with. Relics in the middle are fairly standard. You've got two close to each player, one kind of towards the middle. You have one in the yeah, southern it's corner. It's only one favor in Ganji. Yeah, and I think ultimately, like in the even eastern if eastern corner, I think like if you're taking the side relics, I, I I think yeah, this eastern corner is kind of the issue. Yeah, even if you're taking those side relics, you're not going to be taking the middle relics where there's five. So players are going to be contesting the middle for now. We'll see what the outside ends up being, but lots of resources on this map to expand to, not just the relics, but stones and golds everywhere. And Capouch even walled in his extra gold actually, which is really nice in the northern corner. So I think that's... It's always good when you can get your huge golds on this map walled in. Because you don't have the standard resources. The golds have a few more tiles on this map, yep. too. Yep. So keeping them protected without needing to go to the middle helps you a lot. I think having cheaper villagers right now just feels so smooth. When you're trying to create scouts and vills out of so many TCs, it is a, such a good eco bonus. So even though the Burgundians have great eco, I would expect that Capoch is going to have a bit less in the way of idle TC time. A great safe play from Ganji, as his light calf can be uh, healed up now. Yeah, and with the cheaper villages, the Hindustanis can add their TCs a bit earlier than the other civs when they're trying to fight over mm -hmm. these relics. You do see a lot of like two or three vills building TCs as Ganji's doing, because you can't afford to produce from them if, you, if they go up too quickly. But Kapach has them up and running already. That third one just about to go up on the wood line. One light cap on the left is interesting here from Ganji. So he's going to scout those relics. He doesn't actually see the one that's in that corner. And sometimes you can have three on one side, so there might be a bit of assumptions here from Ganji that there isn't going to be an additional one. We'll see if he just comes home or what. But it's one relic already for Kapach. It's two relics soon. It could possibly get the third. Uh, doesn't have any vision on any of the outer relics right now, Capoch. But he is going to make a gate uh, so he can go to the right side. I like how people are talking about... <laughs> people are really fixated on the relics right now. Which is totally fine. But chat, <laughs> it's literally two relics for Capoch and zero for Ganji, okay? You can stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I agree it's not perfect, but there's so many different things that have to happen in this game. Capoch is doing fine. 44 villagers yeah, and, and, versus 33. You know, if, the, if there were like three relics and one player had two like that, it'd be a problem. When But when there are nine yeah. and like yeah. you're looking at one relic being slightly unfair, I don't think it matters too much for the game. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's the other aspects that are going to matter a lot. In the future too. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't think we've made any changes to the relics on this map, so it is something we could take a look at for the future. It's random map scripts. Things happen from time to time. We do our best to make things as clean and consistent as possible. But again, you know, if we want to have mirrored maps and things be completely fair every single... Or not not fair, but balanced, I guess. Then it, it removes some of the flavor from the game. And blocking here from Capoch as he tries to convert Light Cav. A risky game, and he loses his monks there. And it doesn't work out. He just didn't get lucky enough there with the conversions. He did a good job of blocking, but just not enough, and it feels like he's going to lose the light cab battle now. We'll wow. snipe another monk or two, though, and that's going to be useful. Yeah, very he, helpful he here. Could a third monk, actually. Yeah, he could get the next one as well, and the Ganji will not be too pleased that he sent that third monk out there. He will be pleased, though, that he still has four light cab in the middle. Uh, there goes Capoch, by the way. Yeah, Capoch is bringing in a relic from the right side. And look at that. The, the oh further my. player is taking both of the relics. What? That's pot? Is that allowed? I thought there was like a force field. Uh, yeah, but well played. Seriously, though, all jokes aside, uh, super well played from Capoch, right? 
Like, it is absolutely harder absolutely. for him to get access to this. He lost his scout inside of Ganji's walls. So for him to have had the start he had already at his base, be it 62 villagers now, and then be bringing those relics back home, that is absolutely very impressive, as he's notably with seven on stone here, which is making me think that he might want to go for an early castle, but nope, he's going to go for TC, actually, which is very achievable with the Hindustanis. Yeah. And the other thing, Ganji didn't even scout that side where the other relics are. So it's not like he's going to look at the minimap and see the white dots are gone and yeah, realize yeah, yeah. that Kapach took them. He's going to try to take the relic on the left, but he's not going to know about that until the Vil goes out there and gets attacked by a bear. And oh, there's no loom. Yeah, no, no loom. loom on that Vil. He has the quick wall. I think this is just for an outpost at the end of the day. And Ganji's obviously got to look at a million other things. Now, the villager would win on the hill, but she's not attacking immediately. Watch Ganji lose his like in the middle as he's trying to save. Oh, he just walled it in. Okay, nice job, Ganji. He just makes a zoo. He's playing <laughs> Zoo Tycoon out there. But his like in the middle now get caught out, and he's probably like, uh, or maybe he wants to take the fight. Oh, man. Yeah, he clearly wanted to take the fight. That could not have been closer, actually. Oh, that they both have one like have left. Yep. All right, so what are you thinking for opening here? I really like Halb Hand Cannoneer for Burgundians. But you are up against a sieve that has more range shoot, on their but... hand cannons. Yeah, the Burgundians, they do have extra attack, but I feel like the range... It's kind of like playing against the Britons. The range can be more important in those single unit compositions. Mm -hmm. Now, it is just easier to take advantage of some of your bonuses with Burgundians. Like, I, I like Burgundian Vineyards, once you get that tech, the stream of resources you end up getting from farms is just so nice. But then again, I mean, we're talking about the Hindustanis here. They do have Grand Trunk Road, which increases their gold income significantly. And that also that applies to the relics. When... Yep, and also the like this map has more relics and also more gold. You're going to have those huge gold piles near your base that you'll collect faster. Oh man, Loom's finally coming in for Ganji. He's trying to wall the sides, but that won't matter. Had no army over here, and I liked it on the right side. I guess he figured I could get away with it again. But nice awareness there from Kapoch, who will chase down some villagers and convert a villager. So he could actually use that villager now just to wall it up himself. And is there is there a dead vill near a bear pelt on the ground there on the left for Ganji? Is he regretting not getting Loom again? <laughs> I think you're right, yep. Look, Eco KD. Oh, Ganji with the quick walls there. Are you kidding me, bro? That's sick. He can do it against uh, players as well, not just bears. And he has clicked up. The villager will be converted in there. Oh, can't quick wall a monk, though. <laughs> now, she, now she's got to break out. Yeah. Now it's a cage. <laughs> My chains are gone. <laughs> I don't know. Little religious reference. I haven't thought of that song in years. Um, she's going to die. Uh, the same death she would have died if she was on the other team. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> Pretty much. And this is right, all little, like, yeah. this is fun to talk about, but I really want to see what Ganji's plan is. He's not building anything in the middle. There, there's actually nothing in the middle for either player. We don't have outposts, buildings, or units. He's booming. The yeah. Both of them have four TCs. Four TCs, four relics, and looks like Ganji just didn't scout that one in the bottom corner. Okay. Well, I mean, Ganji, obviously very close to it. Uh, I assume at this point he doesn't think it's there. He continues to toss away villagers towards Lycav, which isn't bothering me at all. Nope. Not in the slightest. And just... Kapoch needs this victory, man. Like, if he gets 3-0'd here, he will have been 3-0'd in three consecutive series to close out all of his possible games. That's and, gotta be painful. Yeah, that you, happens. you just... You feel like with six wins, like, if you get this, you do depend on other people's results. But it's doable that you at least stay alive for the next season. That's, that's... Ganji's been trying to snipe off monks. <laughs> or, uh, Kapach has been trying to snipe off Ganji's monks. I'll see if he gets a few more on the left. He gets another one. <laughs> Dude, I'm so tilted. He Ganji's <laughs> tilting me so much. <laughs> oh, just create literally any military. Like, three spearmen would have been fine. Oh my goodness. Well, okay, walls are going to come up for Kapoch. We have 
it seems yeah, like it's going to be Halb and Paladin for Ganji, but he's just getting Paladin ahead of time right now. Well, it feels like it's going to be Hand Cannoneer and Camel for Kapach, which is... He needs to get them out. The Burgundians are just faster, right? Your Halb and your Paladin, you click as soon as you get Imp, yep, and yep. then you have them. Kapach needs to stall a bit. He needs chemistry. He needs to do the Camel upgrades. Yeah, this is where... If that castle would have been up already for Ganji, he'd be trebbing and pushing, and it would be devastating. But this gives Capwatch the time. But he just saw the, the uh, pikemen there. So he knows it's going to be Halb at least. He's just not expecting the paladin. He can get a second the... castle. Yeah, and he's also opening with the treb. So great awareness from Capwatch. If he sees any sign that it could be paladin, he's going to have to add those camels. But he's thinking it's just Halb for now. And walls on the left from both players. Walls on the right from Ganji. 4-4 four to four with relics, as even as can be. And Bombard Cannons are going to need to come in for Ganji. Did he click chemistry yet, though? I feel like he did. I didn't see it. So he can't actually for... make them yet. Yeah, and we have the hand cannoneers out for Kapach. So I didn't see it for Ganji, but already that was the first thing Kapach did when he got, got Imp. Yeah. So not only will he have these trebs, but... Uh, where's he? Are those trebs on a hill right now? No, I don't think they are. So if you move them just slightly to the left, there'd be a hill. I don't know if they'd still be in range. But that's what makes this map different than Arena. You have these little hills in the middle. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Paladin surprise is going to be good enough. He needs a lot of them. And he's going to need Siege to push it, right? If you're running into castles, Capoche is probably going to have the time. Uh, but chemistry was in, by the way, because now the bomber cannons are coming out, and that could be a difference maker. It could be a big difference it's maker to take out the trebs. Players. They also has attack grounding yeah, between. Needs to repair. I don't know if you noticed this. He's attack grounding between. Is between them. Both the trebs, so he's damaging both of them at the same time. Still, though, you know, the hand cannons are there to snipe the bomber cannons. A nice job from Capwatch, but he hasn't been able to do it. Now the paladins come out. Will the castle fall for Ganji? He will definitely take the trebs. Will he keep his castle up? It's going to be so close. Oh, well, the way Catpunch's day has been going, it feels like this castle is going to stand up, but no, it goes down. The trebs will go down too, but now can can Catpunch hold? He didn't know it was going to be Paladin until just seconds ago. He needs heavy camel. It's still 15 seconds away, but there aren't enough Paladins yet really to force the fight. The hand cannon still though. They're, they're going to pack a punch here. You are Hindustani, so your camels do attack faster. We've got Paladin, Pikeman versus the Gunpowder and the camels then from the Hindustanis. Pretty much what we would have expected here, honestly. This is such a close yeah, and game. And because the Paladin is so expensive, we don't have Halbin for Ganji. These are just Pikeman. Yep. And also the Paladin numbers, they don't have bloodlines. They're weak Burgundian Paladins, you want to use them in early Imp as a bit of a shock because they come in so fast, but Kapach has managed to hold off that initial push and now has three castles in the middle. Three yeah. castles in camel production. I'm trying to see if there's extra resources. There's gold and stone to the right for Ganji, which he has scouted. For Kapach, he's got he gold and stone off. to the left. Yeah, I mean, the fight's definitely happening through the middle. I, it just doesn't seem like anyone's going to run out of resources soon, and I thought there would maybe be a chance. Shouldn't happen. There's the unique tech for those hand cannons. Those hand cannons now have more range than Arbalest. This is and a... The good thing here is they have 17 attack. They can do a good bit of damage to Paladins, too. Yeah, yep. I think something that Ganji's going to be a little bit more suited for here is the Bomber Cannon Micro. I almost jinxed him, obviously, but... That is more of a stylistic thing for him. He's more comfortable with these types of games. So Capwatch out of his comfort zone, but he's doing really well so far. Ganji's going to make him work for this win. And oh yeah, man. He's taking a good fight here against That's the Paladins, an amazing but fight. I feel like this is what Capwatch wants. He gets, yeah. got camels against the Paladins and hand cannoneers against the Halves. Yep, I mean, I, I guess I cursed him. That was the worst possible fight Ganji could have taken. Yes, he takes out a Bomber Cannon or two. But he went Paladin against Camel, and then he went Halb against the Hand Cannons. If it's the opposite of that, it's an amazing fight. But still, he falls back. He's got another castle up. That he does. 
And Catpaw has Trebs ready. Obviously, those things are going to be sitting ducks if his own Bombard Cannons aren't hitting the right positions. It's so tricky. It's so easy to lose your Bombard Cannons and then lose your Trebs. But there's not a lot of stone yeah, income is. for Ganji. So he's got to he's got to repair this and get the pickoffs now. Big shot. Another big shot there as well. And the hand cannons. There's no hand cannons anymore. Uh-oh. No way. Yeah, if, if you're Kapach, do you suddenly add in just a few Gulams just to have more army against the Halves there? If you have the APM, maybe. You know, I, I think ultimately you, you want Trebs out of those things. But, you know, he is opting for Trebs over Bomber Cannons, which is perhaps questionable. Such a crazy fight. Like, normally the fights in the middle in this game, uh, on this map, aren't where both players are outside. It's like one player's inside the walls and the other person is knocking on the door. They're both sharing the yeah, middle area right now. Fight in the middle. And it's still yeah, anyone's you know, game. With those paladins, it's hard to keep the siege alive. Hand cannon deers are nice, but they can't snipe off Trebs or even bombard cannons yeah. like paladins can. That's even true. if they go down, they keep the castles up. I'd like to see one Treb on the left side from Ganji. The left of your castle. Just pick away at that one castle there from Capwatch. And if Capwatch could get Fletching and Ballistics, that would be so valuable! Another massive shot there for Ganji. It's the Bombard Cannon Mass that's making the difference. Fletching... Yeah, now, though we have Siege Engineers, finally, for Capwatch. That's a nice upgrade here. That's gonna here. make a huge difference. It'll give an extra one range, and that'll let him stay closer to his castles. That's something the Burgundians don't have. They bombard cannons to do extra damage, but they won't get that plus one range. I mean, there's so many castles here, and he's got so going? much stone. Gosh, where are your trebs going? <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know. If all those two trebs. I feel like that's the worst spot to put the trebs. They're not defended <laughs> by any of the castles. Oh, uh, I agree with you. And he's just trying again. He does get good shots in on Catwatch's bombard cannons when they go for the treb. Um, or Ganji, rather, but... Oh, man, this is crazy. I mean, it, it all depends on the micro, and can they afford to keep this up? It's so expensive for both of them. It feels like Ganji might have the numbers here. There's only, like, 15 hand cannons behind, and, and Ganji's gonna snipe the Trebs now with his bomber cannons and keep his castle up. It's 160 pop for both players. The Paladins have melted. The cannons split. Are you kidding? Amazing micro from Ganji. Just melt. Holy crap, man. I, I mean, what did we just witness? Both players took great fights and bad fights at the same time. And still it, we're in the same the position. The castle stand. What? You know, one thing that I think could help Kapach here is if he went for Fletching and down that line at the blacksmith. Yeah. Just to, Not just to give the castles more attack, but to give them more range. Let's them hit the halves from further away and yep. makes it harder to use bombard cannons for Ganji. Yeah, I mean his his castles the already have around. his castles already have sixty kills. So those castles have already done a lot. Getting fletching and bodkin and ballistics would help him so much, and that could be enough to change the game. But I'm now looking as we see gold and stone income available on the right for Ganji. Capoch could break through there. He did drop a castle there. And I think just one or two golems sent into that area would distract Ganji from the middle area, where he still has so much more work to do than Kapoch, one castle versus three. And there's a stone there, too, that Kapoch could try to take also. Yeah. I just hope he doesn't blindly set a gather point and one of the golems attacks that palisade and lets the bear out. <laughs> castle from Ganji, though. He knows he's exposed there now. He will complete that castle regardless. So we might see you know, siege pressure there. Villagers are also going through there for Capwatch to build a castle. So he's going to find out pretty soon that won't work. This game is insane. They both have 132 villagers. It's 60 army versus 62. And to make things even more ridiculous, we won't know for, you know, till the end of the week, basically. But this, if Capwatch doesn't win this game, it's possible he gets relegated because of it. Like, the stakes are insane. And Ghulam's... His vills are gonna run around that castle and just build one behind it yeah and i don't think ganji can stop that he can maybe get trebs out sooner yeah he should he should oh he what doesn't does he see have it over here he doesn't actually see it oh my god in a massive shot in the middle i just heard all the screaming of the hand cannons as they went down <laughs> holy crap oh, yeah look at that there's like 10 of them a big pile of corpses there they all sound the exact same when they die they scream in unison Rah! 
All right, man, this is this is just ridiculous game. Okay, good good engagement right now for Ganji, provided he saves his bomber cannons. If he saves his bomber cannons, this is an epic fight. There's so few hand cannons on the left side. Oh my goodness. Ganji's killing a lot of camels, and they've got some uh, bomber cannons behind that, and finally he's taken out a castle. I think that was the better fight for him. He's he shipping away. One. Also losing some villagers on the right. He would lose more at Ballistics and Bodkanero would be in. Capwatch still not doing that. Capwatch losing more castles now. He's now going to be down to one castle. Ganji's fully pushing the middle. However, Capwatch does have a lot of hand cannons again. He's got 16 behind all that. Well, that might change if more and shots land. They're landing on the hand cannons. Oh, the micro again. Oh! Capwatch is on the right. Oh the my god. Birds. Oh, they clumped up. That You're was so, so close. I thought he was going to lose everything. Yeah, Capo just taking the berries on the right. He doesn't have any siege, so they're just on a standoff there. But Gan Ganji's still able to take that gold. This game's nuts. This game is insane. Yeah, the Kustier on the right are going to be very good against the Gulams if... Yeah. Uh, if Kapach keeps trying to push. He had a treb there, but it got taken out. Okay, the only gold income for Ganji, the only gold that he's mining is actually the gold that is underneath Kapoch's castle that doesn't have fletching. Before, obviously, you know, oh, you're right. you're... like before, obviously, we if were correct in saying, but like, now especially you need to have that. Like that, that could change the whole game here. And yeah, and you know what? Th those fletching upgrades on the castles—that's something you learn if you're playing a lot of clown matchups like this one. For sure, or lots for sure. of arena. Yep. It might not be as obvious for the castles if you're more familiar with other maps. Yeah, it it's something that doesn't suit Capwatch's style, but I think let's just say you know it's Platinum League, right? Top 24 in the world. It is definitely something that has to be happening at this stage. Right. Four to four with relics. So another castle in the middle from Capwatch. So he's still holding here. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. And he's going to go for Siege Elephants. down to 160. So, like, one of the problems here is Kapach, he doesn't really have a trash unit. He's been throwing gold units in the middle all this game. Yeah. And how does he transition as the gold starts to run out? I actually think since you have the ranges already, mixing in skirms isn't awful because it helps against the Halbs. Um... And also, I think that because then he would get Fletching. <laughs> Which I really want to <laughs> see. That's a good point. <laughs> oh god, it's just like he that he's so focused. I think this is the last wave of bomber cannons for either player. We've got seven On of the them right, for Ganji. Rating. And we've got five of them for Capoch. Oh man. Oh wait, wait, Revolution's just been oh, researched. Flemish Revolution. What? He clicked the button. He what? Clicked the button. It's actually happening? Uh, he's a hundred and ninety seven army. Oh my god, guys. The revolution has been researched. All the villagers for Ganji have now become army. And he's going to clear the castles in the middle. There's no way he's you stop clear it. The castles on the right, maybe. You, 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 the thing is, you can't it's, it's stop like it. You're you, going to lose the castles. You can you can go back behind your walls and try to amass more hand cannoneers. Like you can't really push a big mass of hand cannoneers with this army. But you're going to get the castles no matter what. Even if you trade really well. It's still, you're at 50 army versus 200. You will lose your buildings, and your army is going to be exposed. And I, I almost spoke it into existence, apparently. But Capwatch was super frustrated with the previous game, has been on a really disappointing losing streak. This is just the worst possible you, you thing. You can't open for him. that gate and let them in. Uh, he, oh, he was open the gate. I mean, hand cannon's supposed to be good against these things. They're 75 HP, they've got lots of attack. 12 plus 4, but the most important thing about this is the numbers of them here. And Ganji has just clicked the button, as we say. And it was the, honestly, now that you see it, the perfect way to finish off the game, wasn't it? He didn't have to go for the normal yeah, fight. He, he, he just click a button. Yeah, he waited right until the gold runs out, right? Yep. So, Kapach, can he add more hand cannoneers now? No, he can't. He's doing thumb wow. ring. What's he going to do now, Skirmisher? Oh man, I mean, if Capwatch was frustrated before, what a way to lose this game. And what a great decision from Ganji. I mean, the tool was at his disposal and you and I hadn't really brought it up at this point. We didn't really feel like it was that type of game. But now it just flipped the game on its head.
Yeah, it, it's the type of thing you're not thinking about it, right? It's just yeah. so weird. Now, here's that all of a sudden it happens. What we should say in these instances is this: now Ganji is down to like you know 28 bills, so he's got to add more villagers and he's adding them back to farms. However, a well-executed revolution means that you're killing, you're, you're defeating your opponent. There's no countering it at that point. You are just yeah. in an awful there's position, no, especially no when your eco is building bad. up. Yeah, especially when there's like yeah. no way What's to kill the, the units. Like, yeah, what, once you have the big mass of bombard cannons, you kill any type of walling, you destroy the TCs, you can go take the relics now. Yep. That's the key. And I have mean, the look, bombard cannons. Right now, it's 80 to 40, and Ganji's yep. gonna be. He still has TCs pumping bills. Watch doesn't. Dang. What a great job. He actually took out the castle on the right with those units. Catpotch drops the GG. That's a 3 0 for Ganji, who has two more rounds. And so. After this series concludes, Catwatch has nothing left in Titans League. He sits at five wins, the same tally that he sat at after the first two rounds. So just disaster. That's got to be rough. Yeah, I mean, like opening up with a 3-0 and a 2-1 and then getting 3-0'd three straight is painful. And, and Ganji is tied with the guy. So... If Ganji and ends up getting one win, he's Perhaps the most ahead. painful way to lose in the final game, too. Seriously. I mean, I mean, it felt like it was scripted, right? Catbotch saying a uh, nice joke after losing the previous game. And then <laughs> we sat here and looked at the matchup and, and we were like, mm, <laughs> I wonder what he's going to think now. Uh, it is interesting, yeah. man. Some people hate the tech. Some people love the tech. But I think one thing we can agree on, the tech is in the game and it exists. And Ganji did the right thing to go for it because that just completely flipped the game yeah. on its head. Maybe we just got to mod it out for the next league. <laughs> I mean, I. it added drama, and it was really interesting, and I imagine it's really fun to watch. Honestly, I really want to know what happens in that game if that tech doesn't get researched, right? I think on yeah, just... like Kapatra was in an interesting spot. Like It felt like he was starting to lose a bit where he needed to make a transition out of his gold composition, yes. yep. and it wasn't clear what he was going to go for. Yeah, and I'm I'm just gonna go back. I forget what time that was researched. Like he was behind. He was funnily enough researching fletching at 52 minutes. <laughs> you can't make this up. Okay. Oh god. Okay, T West, go to go to 5205 for me right now. I need to show you this. Wait, is is he a is he a fletching there? Go to 5205. Me... Yeah. <laughs> let me just let me just check the. I want to look at the text. Because you can see on the like the tech tree graph, <laughs> you can see the bump in his graph where he researched fletching, where he gets some extra yeah, technology yeah, but score. <laughs> it, so if you go to 5205, okay, Flemish Revolution is right. five seconds away from completing, and fletching is 13 seconds away from completing. So he finally completes fletching after the villagers are not even Just collecting resources anymore. <laughs> and then I actually want to see, does fletching mean it hits them? Okay, it actually doesn't, which doesn't make this quite as comical, but my goodness. I really do think, though, you know, he had a great game here, Capoch. It Ballistics yeah, and and Bod Canero and Bracer, all those ranged upgrades were researched. I mean, the castle on the left, 35 kills. The castle on the right's new, but I know the ones before that had maybe 50 between them. I think he could have taken better fights. Ganji sat on one freaking castle in that middle area for so long, and Ganji still got yeah. the job done. He just sniped so much siege. Yeah. I, like, like that That's the key in those fights. Even if you're losing your army, it's not that expensive because you're just making the trash units, and then you're taking out the siege. Yeah. You take out the trebs and the cannons, and your castle stays up. It was a crazy series from Ganji, and Ganji has got me even more hyped about this format. Like The whole point about Titans League was... To give players the opportunity to say, hey, I can do this. I can. I see a path to be able to get there with the big dogs, right? But the normal conversation that we've had surrounding a lot of these games with the promoted players has been, yeah, they're fighting relegation. After three rounds, he's tied with Capoch. He's got two more rounds, one of which is against one of the other promoted players. And then Miguel, who's kind of been struggling. So th this is just such a crazy story. Uh, but if... Season two has shown us anything. Uh, don't expect anything <laughs> because uh, we expected Capwatch <laughs> to be able to get some better results as well. 
over his past, last couple it's rounds. Just and... expect the Flemish Revolution, really. Yeah, seriously. I can't believe we actually talked about that. So... Like, it is so fitting that it happened after Capwatch said, nice joke in game two.